or perhaps I should say, <clears throat> good morning, Earl M. Moorcock, Dean Emeritus of the College of Engineering, just in order that you will be introduced properly on this particular tape. What I wanted to talk with you about this morning, Earl, was what I have called, or I'm choosing to call, the oral history of RIT. That is, the history from about the mid-twenties or the early thirties up until the present time. This was a period when you were at the Institute and when you played an extremely important part, first in the teaching in the electrical department, then as an administrator, and finally as dean of the College of Engineering. So I would just like to have you chat along informally, telling me when you came to the Institute, how you happened to come to RIT, a little bit about the faculty at that time, about the size of the Institute, about the programs, who the key figures were while you were there, and so forth. Now, from time to time, I will interject a question, but uh, uh, what I want you to do is just talk along as if I were a newcomer to the Rochester scene and you were trying to bring me up to date. All right? Go ahead. Pull that up to you. Uh, no, I don't think it's necessary because I was sitting just about like this as I was talking. About like this, or right. yeah. close enough to direct yourself. Sure. Now. Uh, well, then I shall say, uh, if uh, you want this in, I will uh, start with a little bit of, of before I of my own personal history about my education, the war, interrupting a few things like that, and the GE test course, and then the work for the West Virginia Engineering Company, and then a, um, the reasons for coming to RIT. That is to go into teaching, which wasn't my objective. Sure. Set merely to come uh, uh, with a viewpoint of finding industrial employment within a year or so, and then why I stayed. Now then I can say, uh, soon after arriving or doing my first year at the Institute, uh, much of its uh, uh, history uh, during uh, the war and after war periods was. Uh, Uh, in uh, those periods, uh, uh, oh, I learned of those during that particular period. And some of this may be of interest as an uh, introduction. Sure, well, that's uh, good. Do what I have to say. Why don't we? All right. Okay. Uh, prior to coming to RIT, I had uh, finished my engineering training at Clemson University in South Carolina. Uh, this training was interrupted by the war, uh, during which time uh, I uh, served in the Navy and uh, was given a training in uh, mechanical engineering. Consequently, when I returned to Clemson after the war, I was able to uh, obtain my bachelor's degree in both electrical and in mechanical engineering. Following graduation, I worked for the General Electric Company in Schenectady, New York, uh, and uh, spent a year and a half in their graduate engineering uh, training program. Uh, following the training at General Electric, I went to work for a consulting engineering company in West Virginia. Uh, this company offered engineering services to coal mine companies. We installed powerhouses, substations, transmission lines, 
and uh, all other mining uh, machinery. Uh, this experience was uh, quite valuable because a younger man uh, had the opportunity of obtaining uh, very uh, responsible uh, work. After a period of three and a half years, I began to realize that this type of work was principally for younger uh, people uh, and that uh, promotion beyond a certain stage uh, was uh, quite uh, questionable. So I began to uh, consider a change. It was then that I uh, realized the difficulties of seeking employment from uh, such a remote uh, uh, position uh, in the uh, country. I decided that it may be well worthwhile to consider teaching for a year or so in a community where a uh, great deal of industrial work was located. Through the uh, Institute of Electrical Engineers, I made two contacts, one with Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, the other with Rochester Institute uh, in uh, Rochester. I decided uh, to accept employment with uh, Rochester Institute of Technology, but I made it very clear to uh, Mr. Fenninger, who was then head of the electrical department, that my interest was not definitely in teaching, but rather uh, in using uh, a job, uh, a teaching job, to uh, locate permanent uh, uh, technical employment uh, within a year or so. Uh, after reporting uh, to the Institute, I discovered, one, that I liked teaching very much. Now you uh, came in, the, in September 1924? I, this was in September of 1924. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Fenninger had been there just one year, and Colonel Randall, the new president, had been there a little more than one year. So the uh, program was quite new when I came. Uh, many things uh, uh, came to my attention during these first uh, few years, principally, with, through, principally through contacts with uh, other uh, teachers who had uh, been at the Institute uh, during the war and the period after the war. Uh, some of these uh, items may be of interest here. In the early tw 20s, the Rochester Athenaeum and Mechanics Institute was passing through a very difficult period in its history. During the First World War, courses for men were changed to offer training for mechanics needed by the military services. And after the armistice, these were continued in a school of industrial arts with little change for veterans. Many of the veteran students after the First World War appeared to be more interested in the government handout than in obtaining an education. The range in preparation was exceedingly wide and class grouping for mathematics and basic science courses was almost impossible. Conduct in the classrooms and laboratories left much to be desired, and attempts at discipline was ineffective. Very few men students other than veterans enrolled, and this trend continued as the number of veterans decreased with time. The administration of the school underwent rapid change 
with about three presidents within five, within five years. In addition to the educational and administrative problems, the school operated with a deficit which was increasing each year. Something needed to be done. Should the school cease operation? Should it operate evening classes only? Should it be turned over to the City Department of Education for operation as a technical, in technical high school? The Institute's problems and their causes were studied at length, and the Board of Directors decided upon the following procedure. A new president, Colonel John A. Randall, was to be employed. Colonel Randall had taught physics and had served as department head at Pratt Institute. He had organized educational programs for the servicemen during the war and for veterans after the war. His reputation in education for young men was highly regarded. Colonel Randall was charged with the responsibility of reorganizing the technical programs at the Institute for Young Men. For several years prior to World War I, cooperative technical programs had been operated at the Institute with considerable success. It was decided that these should be resumed and that the, inst and that the industries of the community should accept joint responsibility with the Institute for the training of students. Three three-year cooperative programs were started in September 1923 in electrical technology, mechanical technology, and chemical technology. Local industries who employed students were Eastman Kodak, Bausch and Lomb, General Railway Signal, Gleason Works, Northeast Electric, Rochester Gas and Electric, Rochester Telephone, Stromberg Carlson, Taylor Instrument, Ritter Dental, and others. Now, Earl, when you came to the Institute in 1924, <clears throat> what were the other departments that were in operation? You mentioned the School of Industrial Arts. What were the other schools or the other departments? Uh, there was an art school which had uh, operated for a long period of time and was um, making reasonable uh, adjustments uh, to the changes after the war. There was also a department of home economics. Uh, the uh, state uh, system of education uh, had been uh, offering programs very similar to those offered at uh, the Institute. And uh, th this competition uh, was being uh, felt uh, severely uh, in the uh, Food Administration uh, Division. Now, who, were, uh, who were the people in charge of those areas? You mentioned uh Mr. Fenniger was in charge of the School of Industrial Arts, was he? Uh, Mr. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Johns, Alfred A. Johns, was in charge of the School of Industrial Arts, and he also served as head of the chemistry department. Uh, Mr. Uh, Fenninger, uh, who also had taught at the Pratt Institute, uh, was responsible for the electrical department, and uh, Mr. Evans, uh, who uh, had worked uh, with Colonel Randall in the uh, military service, uh, was called upon to uh, head the mechanical department. Now, uh, the home economics uh, 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 program was headed by Miss uh, May uh, uh, D. Benedict, uh, and the uh, School of Art by Clifford Ulp. Uh, about what was the size of the institute in 1924? Do you remember approximately how many students, how many faculty members? I would be guessing now, but I would say that the total enrollment uh, in the day school was probably uh, uh, less than 500. Uh, there was uh, uh, 
a tendency, however, uh, to increase. In, uh, uh, in 1923, the uh, first year class in the electrical program was around uh, 55 uh, students, where, whereas the uh, third year class had only five. And this, uh, to some extent, was the case in the other uh, programs for men. What was the level of the programs that were, that were offered at that time? Uh, were, the students were all high school graduates that came to you, were they? Uh, prior to 1923, um, there is a great deal of question in my mind about the preparation of the students that came. Uh, it seems as though if a, a person was a veteran and could uh, read and write, why, uh, he was probably taken in. Uh, with the uh, incoming class of 1923 into the initial cooperative uh, programs, we began to uh, pay far more attention to the uh, qualifications of the uh, incoming uh, students. Uh, we required high school graduation. We required at least elementary algebra and uh, hoped that they would have had more mathematics and possibly a science course. But we were not uh, able at that time to uh, be as uh, strict as we would uh, like in admitting students. And uh, were the co-op courses that you mentioned were three years in length? Uh, the co-op courses were three years in length and the co-op periods were two weeks each. Two boys held one job. One worked for a two-week period, the other attended school and they uh, interchanged uh, throughout the school year. Well, <clears throat> the length of the co-op period is uh, changed over the years until now, as you know, it's a quarter and has been a quarter approximately 12 weeks for, uh, since sometime in the mid-50s. Uh, how did it happen to get from two weeks into uh, to the 12-week period? Well, certainly the two-week uh, period was a very short uh, time. Uh, you no know more than uh, had a class uh, uh, started and uh, time was up uh, for the boy to go back to work. Now, industry disliked this just as much as the school. Uh, they, of course, had to keep uh, payrolls, and uh, the uh, foreman on the jobs uh, uh, hardly knew uh, which student was to be at work at which time. And so uh, after a year, I believe we operated uh, a year and possibly two years with the two-week period, and then changed to the four-week period. It was liked very much by both school and industry. Many of us questioned uh, whether even four weeks was too short a period for the co-op block. And then later this became six weeks, did it not? And then it became the 12 weeks, about the mid-50s. Well, we found the four-week period to be reasonably good. Um, and uh, it, uh, we operated, I would uh, guess, somewhere 10 to 12 years using this uh, four-week cooperative uh, uh, quarter. And we changed then uh, sometime uh, uh, prior to World War uh, II to a six-week uh, cooperative uh, period. And later on, when the Institute uh, began to offer degrees uh, in the early 50s, we changed to the full quarter system. Now, you were here during the Depression. What happened to the co-op program during the Depression? Uh, oddly enough, the co-op uh, program uh, prospered during the first few years of the Depression. Uh, the number of students uh, increased, and uh, this was partly due to the fact that we uh, uh, was sold on the uh, idea that prosperity was around the corner and uh, that uh, since the student uh, couldn't obtain a job, uh, most parents thought it was better for him to be in school than to be uh, uh, roaming uh, about without uh, uh, occupation. Uh, 
Then again, the school set up a system to make a moderate loan each week to those students who had uh, uh, financial uh, problems. Now, all of these helped. And when the student once got into a class in 1928-29, of course, he was uh, in school until uh, 31 and 32. Uh, so our, uh, we did not feel the depression at all until uh, it was almost over. Then we began to notice reduction in our incoming freshman classes. So uh, the dip that we had due to the depression uh, came mostly in uh, 30, uh, uh, 1, 2, and 3. Did the uh, industries uh, continue to employ the boys all right, or did you have to seek far and wide for positions? Well, we had to uh, seek uh, 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 employment for students uh, outside of the Rochester area. Of course, the four-week cooperative uh, program helped this uh, uh, considerably, for the boy could leave for a four-week period and uh, uh, interchange uh, uh, on their jobs uh, uh, in this length of time. Uh, uh, the employers outside of the city uh, seem to uh, uh, have little objection to this. Now, some of the outside uh, of Rochester companies that employed students were uh, the um, power company in Elmira uh, uh, accepted quite a number. We located students in the Buffalo and Niagara Falls area uh, in uh, companies like uh, uh, Seneca Falls and Palmyra uh, and uh, Syracuse uh, and uh, also the IBM company and uh, a few started with General Electric. Now, in those days, the department was responsible for placing its own students, was it not? There was no centralized uh, division of uh, placement. The, the placement was carried on entirely by the department. In fact, uh, the department head uh, reported directly to the president and was uh, quite independent of all other administrative officers. I may add that uh, there was also uh, some problem of cooperation between departments, or lack of it. Uh, there were many savings and many advantages that could have been gained uh, uh, had there been uh, a little stronger uh, administration to uh, keep us uh, uh, working uh, together. Uh you mentioned a little bit about the level of the boy coming to you as a freshman. What about the level of the actual programs offered uh, while they were in the three-year courses at RIT? Would these have been comparable with uh, uh, engineering programs? Uh, there weren't many other technical institutes in the U.S. How would you categorize the level of the programs as they went through the three years? Well, as the number of uh, uh, applicants increased, uh, we were uh, able to uh, be uh, uh, more selective. And within uh, probably by 1926, the incoming uh, class was uh, uh, selected uh, based on their uh, good high school performance. Uh, elementary and intermediate algebra was required. Uh, students were favored if they had had uh, an additional uh, year of high school mathematics or physics or chemistry. And we were able to select a uh, student who would be looked upon with uh, favor for admission to most of the engineering uh, colleges. Now, of course, uh, we uh, could not uh, compete with a four-year engineering uh, college and we had no intention of doing this. There was, however, a great deal of uh, technical information uh, that we could uh, impart to our students. Uh, we placed considerable emphasis on uh, the laboratory instruction. 
And uh, these uh, students uh, went out to work uh, after graduation as uh, technicians, engineering assistants, draftsmen, and uh, a great uh, number of positions in industry that uh, they uh, uh, were ideally uh, suited for. Who were some of the uh, men that you remember from those classes in the 30s? I know some of them, but uh, who are some of the ones that uh, occur to you? Well, one of the first ones in the, who was a senior when the first year I came was Walter Payne. Uh, Walter became uh, uh, superintendent of all underground construction for Rochester Gas and Electric Company. Uh, in the uh, next uh, year, uh, there was... Uh, Gordon Bangs, Glenn uh, Firm, uh, and uh, well, I think I could name, uh, if I had a chance to stop and think and write these out, maybe 15 or 20 uh, men who came along out of that uh, class of 1926 uh, 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 that uh, uh, actually uh, went reasonably far in industry. Well, now there were quite a few that, uh, maybe just a few years later, that went into uh, education and became outstanding leaders in the New York State uh, Technical Institutes and Community Colleges. Who were some of those? Well, uh, uh, first let me mention a little of the problem that we had in uh, uh, placing our students into uh, technical colleges for uh, further education. Uh, the Technical Institute was not well known at the time, uh, and uh, there was a considerable reluctance uh, on the part of the engineering college to accept uh, graduates of uh, our program uh, with uh, a reasonable transfer credit. Uh, we found, however, there were a few schools who were quite liberal in their thinking about this, and they said, well, we'll give the boy a chance, and uh, if he can do the work, we'll uh, let him go uh, as far as he can, and if we find that he can uh, do certain things in our undergraduate program, we will give him adequate credits. Uh, these students were not very close to the area of Rochester, <laughs> uh, and uh, we began to uh, then place a certain number of our students who wanted to continue for their bachelor's degree in engineering. And uh, in most uh, cases, these men did exceedingly well, and uh, the certain schools uh, established uh, uh, a uh, uh, the operational policy with us so that if we would say to the Dean of Engineering give this boy two years credit he's probably worth more they would say we know he will be. What were some of the schools now, that they went to? Now uh, uh, in um, some of the first schools Michigan State was uh, uh, quite reasonable about this. A little later on uh, Vanderbilt University in Nashville Tennessee was quite uh, 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 good in this respect. We found that uh, uh, we could uh, move some of the boys into uh, Clarkson College. Uh, we knew Dean Powers there and he would talk with the boy and uh, he usually would end up with two years uh, full credit. Now getting back to some of these uh, men that finished their baccalaureate degrees at least and then went on into education. Do you remember some of those? Yes. Uh, uh, one that occurs to me is Otto Klitgaard, who became uh, president uh, of the uh, State Technical Institute in New York City. Uh, another is um, uh, Albert uh, French, who uh, just retired uh, this June as president of the New York State uh, uh, Technical Institute at Canton, New York. Uh, Larry Sidley was head of, uh, and still is, head of all technical programs at the State Technical Institute in Binghamton. Uh, um, George Whitney has a similar position in uh, Alfred. I believe George retired last year. Uh, these are a few I probably 
with a little time to think it over, could name uh, several others. Well, uh, these two things uh, would uh, uh, coincide. <laughs> Uh, anything that uh, is uh, good for the community is bound to have some impact on it. And uh, I'm sure that uh, the uh, leaders of industry uh, regarded uh, this uh, program at the Institute uh, highly. Uh, they uh, would not have uh, kept it in force uh, uh, during uh, the 40-year period that I was there. <laughs> now, uh, as the uh, Institute went, program went along, uh, what were some of the administrative changes? You were head of the electrical department, and then the electrical department was formed into a division, a division of applied science. Do you want to just sketch some of those changes? Well, yes. Uh, when I first came to the Institute, I had mentioned that uh, Mr. William Fenninger was head of the electrical department. Um, and uh, this uh, department, as did others, reported directly uh, to uh, Colonel Randall, uh, the president. Uh, in 1930, uh, Mr. Fenninger uh, transferred uh, to the State Department of Education and uh, became uh, uh, supervisor of vocational and technical training for the state of New York. I may add that one of his uh, first jobs was to install uh, technical programs in the existing agricultural schools of the state. And uh, to my knowledge, uh, he initiated the uh, 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 programs at Alfred, Canton, Farmingdale, New York City, and I believe one other state technical institute. Uh, following uh, Mr. Fenniger's uh, departure from the school, uh, I was made head of the uh, electrical department. Uh, and uh, continued uh, in uh, this uh, capacity until uh, 19, uh, I believe, 51 or 2, um, when uh, the um, Institute uh, first offered uh, associate degrees and then uh, later uh, offered uh, a bachelor's degree. Uh, in the meantime, uh, early in uh, 1940, uh, the uh, administration of the Institute was changed uh, at the top so that uh, uh, appointments were made uh, for a, um, a person uh, to uh, uh, handle the uh, educational administrative work. Uh, later on, uh, Dr. Leo Smith uh, was placed in this position, and uh, we reported uh, to him, uh, that is, the department heads reported to him, rather than directly to the president. About 1951 or two, uh, the uh, Institute uh, changed its administration to form major divisions. Uh, these divisions were the uh, uh, technical division, the art division, the graphic arts division, and the uh, uh, business uh, division. Uh, each uh, division had a, uh, a chairman. And this uh, chairman uh, acted as a department head, but also exercised some authority uh, over the other uh, departments in uh, his uh, uh, division. Uh, later on, these divisions 
uh, were uh, changed to uh, colleges, and the department, uh, uh, the uh, division chairman, uh, was uh, given the title of dean. Uh, this uh, administrative arrangement uh, uh, continued until my retirement in 1964. Now, Earl, you were here during World War II, when again we lost many of our students to the armed forces. What were some of the uh, problems that uh, accompanied the World War II? What were some of the things that the Institute did to compensate for these? And what happened to the co-op program during World War II? Uh, in World War uh, II, uh, the uh, demand uh, of the services on young men hit the Institute quite uh, heavily. Uh, I recall that uh, one year we uh, admitted uh, in the electoral department about uh, 50 to 60 freshmen. At the end of the uh, first year, I believe that all except one of these students had been taken into the military service. Now they were allowed to stay at in uh, classes at the Institute for the first year. But uh, immediately upon the end of the school year, they uh, were drafted, all entered the service at an extremely high rate. Now one may uh, wonder about uh, uh, various uh, programs that the school may have done for the uh, military. Um, uh, the demands of the military were such that uh, uh, use of the facilities at RIT uh, did not seem to fit in uh, much with their needs. Now, uh, of course, there was a great demand on the part of industry for employing the members of the faculty, so there was no question about uh, this. Uh, some of these, um, uh, some of the faculty members actually entered the uh, service. Uh, or, um, these men were soon uh, taken into the officer uh, uh, corps and uh, served uh, the period of the war in the service. Others uh, uh, worked uh, part-time uh, in uh, industry. and. Uh, this is, uh, there was very little question about uh, securing just the employment that you could desire and uh, that offered no problem to the Institute. I, I may mention this fact uh, about myself. <laughs> uh, of course, I had done, continued with consulting engineering work all the time that I was at the Institute and I had uh, worked more for the uh, General Motors Corporation, uh, Delco Appliance Division, than uh, any other uh, uh, local industry. Uh, this company needed uh, a great deal of work uh, to uh, equip its plant with adequate electrical facilities to carry on the uh, much needed military production. And uh, I had uh, considered returning uh, to service in the Navy and uh, had a, a reason, what I consider a reasonably fine offer. But Mr. Halbleib of uh, Delco uh, pointed out that uh, I could be of far more service if I would come and work for the uh, uh, Delco plant. Um, I suggested he make arrangements with Dr. Ellingson at the school uh, for this, and such was made. Uh, I uh, continued uh, contacts at the school for a few hours a day, and then uh, spent the rest of my time uh, working at uh, Delco. I may say that the uh, earnings from Delco that went to the school uh, quite adequately paid my salary. How much more, I'm not quite sure, but... You must be referring to the full professional time and energy contract that we had <laughs> for so many years. Uh, well, now, immediately following World War II, of course, uh, 
you were here during the Veterans Bowl. Do you want to just give some of your recollections of the types of students that we had uh, following World War II? In quite contrast to the veteran program of World War I, the veteran uh, program offered after World War II was uh, uh, probably uh, the uh, best educational program that the Institute had offered to date. Uh, the veterans uh, were uh, in great numbers. Uh, we could uh, uh, choose uh, very carefully uh, in selecting uh, the incoming students. Uh, and uh, I would say probably eight or ten times as many applicants were available as uh, we could handle even though we doubled our capacity. These students turned out to be rather good students from the standpoint of application, grades they received, that maturity, that type of thing. I think uh, for three or four years our uh, graduating classes of these veterans were tops. Following World War II and the Korean War, of course, uh, then the Institute uh, began to think of degree granting, first the associate and then the baccalaureate degree. Do you want to tell us some of the uh, frustrations and also some of the satisfactions that evolved from this work? Of course, there were very good reasons for uh, uh, events as they happened. Uh, following uh, World War uh, II, uh, Major uh, Larry Jarvey, who had uh, uh, served as a uh, curriculum uh, advisor at the Institute for several years prior to the war, was employed uh, uh, by the State Department of Education uh, to uh, uh, establish uh, various technical institutes throughout the state. Uh, these uh, uh, institutes were uh, uh, one in Erie County Technical Institute, uh, Broome County uh, Technical Institute, Mohawk Valley uh, uh, Technical Institute in um, Utica, uh, Hudson Valley Technical Institute in uh, uh, Troy, and uh, I think at that time probably two or three others uh, came into existence. Uh, naturally, uh, these uh, are, um, programs are patterned very much uh, after uh, the work that was done at RIT. And uh, it became quite evident that uh, RIT as a private institution uh, would have great difficulty in competing uh, uh, from a financial point of view uh, with these new state uh, technical institutes. I may add that uh, many institute graduates that I have mentioned before uh, became uh, faculty members at these uh, institutes. And uh, in some cases, the administrator uh, came to the Institute and uh, studied our programs uh, over long periods of time before uh, taking a responsibility uh, for uh, the establishment of these uh, schools. Yes, I believe it's true that when these new Institutes of Applied Arts and Sciences, I think is the actual title of the state game, were set up, I think that Dr. Ellingson was on the advisory committee I think some of their curriculums were just taken lock, stock, and barrel from RIT curriculum, particularly the, uh, the engineering technology curriculum. Uh, I, I think this is uh, true, and I may say how we looked upon this competition uh, at the Institute. Uh, we felt that the need of the uh, young people of the state and the industry of the state should take precedence over uh, uh, what we were uh, doing at RIT. And if we had uh, developed a type of education uh, which uh, had proven itself 
uh, so uh, valuable, then uh, uh, we should take great pride in the fact that uh, the uh, State Department of Education uh, was going to use it even to the extent of, uh, uh, well, shall we say, uh, not quite putting us out of business, but hurting us very much. Well, now, uh, it was hurting us, and therefore we did uh, look towards the degrees, first the associate and then the baccalaureate. Do you want to amplify that a little bit? Well, the, uh, I think this came about 51, uh, uh, and at that time we were beginning to consider not only the technical institute, but the community college. And there was a period of time in which uh, we uh, uh, gave uh, consideration to whether or not RIT should become the community college uh, for the uh, Rochester area. Uh, but the decision uh, was against this particular move. But we also knew that uh, in addition to the state uh, technical institutes, there would be many uh, of the community colleges, and that uh, these two would be offering uh, programs which the institute had uh, uh, previously uh, uh, given. The state at that time uh, was interested in uh, offering a uh, an associate degree uh, at the end of a two-year or equivalent period and uh, they uh, wanted uh, RIT to take the lead in offering this uh, two-year uh, degree. Um, I believe it was about 51 or 52 that uh, this was done. Uh, in a, a period of uh, probably two years uh, the programs uh, were moved up uh, to the uh, Bachelor of Science degree. And I know that our position on that was that this uh, program uh, should not be a degree offered for a uh, educational work which was in any way inferior to that offered by other uh, uh, technical uh, colleges. As I remember it, we actually called it a topping program. And we built the third, fourth, and fifth year upon our associate degree programs. Uh, do you want to uh, describe a little bit more what the topping program involved? Well, first let me say a little bit about the uh, Bachelor of Science degree program. Uh, it, it was soon decided that uh, students should attend the institute on a full-time basis uh, for two years. Uh, this uh, uh, would uh, be the equivalent in uh, every respect of the first two years of the conventional engineering uh, college. Then cooperative programs uh, would continue for an additional three years with a student attending uh, on the quarter system in classes for two quarters at work for two quarters. In this way, the uh, educational program for the bachelor's degree was, a, was equivalent in time, in classroom time, uh, to the uh, conventional four-year engineering college. Uh, some question arose about credit for uh, the uh, very valuable cooperative experience. But our thinking on this was that that should be above and beyond the academic uh, requirements for the four-year degree. And uh, my own opinion at this time was that we offered probably a much better program in engineering than did most of the engineering colleges. And of course, this was due to the fact that our boy had three years of cooperative experience in addition. Now, another question uh, that you asked about the topic of program. Uh, in these, uh, in the state technical institutes, like we had found at RIT, there were many outstanding uh, students 
uh, these boys had uh, excellent academic records in their schools. And uh, the state uh, schools were doing uh, a very fine job. These uh, boys, like our own graduates of a three-year cooperative program, uh, began to uh, uh, desire additional education after graduation from the uh, state school, and uh, they too uh, faced the difficulty of finding uh, colleges which would accept them. Uh, it was our opinion that uh, uh, this uh, uh, should be handled certainly uh, by the Institute uh, to the extent that uh, the programs could be offered. So we established uh, uh, very soon after uh, the uh, Bachelor of Science degree uh, was offered a program uh, for admitting graduates of the state uh, technical institutes. Uh, we found some difficulty in uh, adjusting the students uh, very quickly in classes with our own students and uh, worked out a program whereby they would come to the Institute for two quarters, form a group among themselves and in which we would offer them a special uh, program. Uh, this consisted of a very uh, intense program in mathematics. Uh, they would be uh, given analytic geometry, calculus, and uh, uh, sometimes a second year of calculus. Uh, they would be given a uh, uh, program in uh, uh, physics and a program in chemistry along with some general education uh, studies. Um, they also re uh, received uh, in this uh, uh, program courses which they did not have in the Technical Institute, such as uh, strength of materials, uh, so that upon the completion of these two quarters, they could enter the third year with our regular cooperative students and be at no uh, disadvantage. I believe you call that a transfer adjustment schedule, did you not? We, we call that two-quarter period transfer adjustment uh, program and it was offered in the spring quarters and in the summer quarter so that students could uh, uh, make their arrangements to uh, uh, come uh, when uh, we were not so heavily loaded with our own uh, uh, classes. And then in September they would fit right into they their own third year students. Start with our own third year students in September. Now this uh, topping program that We've been describing here uh, caused us some problems, as I remember it, when we uh, applied for uh, ECPD accreditation. I'm, I'm not too sure that uh, this was a major problem. Uh, most of the engineering colleges, I think, uh, uh, would have done a, uh, in fact, did do a uh, uh, similar thing. They may have taken longer than. Uh, uh, a period of two quarters. Our major program in accreditation was because we offered a two-year program, full-time program, uh, at the technical institute level and at the same time offered a five-year program for the bachelor's degree. Um, at uh, uh, the period uh, of uh, in the early 50s, uh, the uh, uh, Engineers Council for Professional Development uh, did not look with favor on uh, any of the engineering colleges offering a technical institute program. But uh, eventually, our program, between the changes that we made and the change in the attitude of the ECPD, the Institute of Engineering program was incredible. Yes, I think there was a considerable uh, change of mind uh, in the uh, engineering profession uh, regarding the uh, need and training of uh, technicians. And uh, uh, schools uh, uh, who were doing a good job of technician training 
were accredited as such. Uh, as time went on, uh, changes that were made at uh, uh, the Institute, Rochester Institute of Technology, as it became uh, known in about 1950, uh, and uh, the uh, changes in the thinking of the engineering profession uh, led to the full accrediting of the program, five-year program at RIT uh, by the ECPD. Now, all over the years, the Institute has embarked upon several experimental and unusual uh, aspects of education. Uh, do you want to describe some of those? Uh, yes. And uh, in um, most cases, I think uh, the uh, experimental uh, uh, activities which we uh, carried on had uh, uh, certain values. Um, like uh, most uh, experimental work, it uh, is applicable uh, uh, in some places and uh, not very applicable in others. I think uh, probably um, uh, major difficulties uh, uh, came because we were probably looking for a cure-all and, and uh, did not uh, find it. One of the first things uh, we started uh, as an experimental uh, feature uh, was about 1928. We called it the anecdotal uh, record uh, system. It consisted of uh, having each uh, member of the faculty write uh, anecdotes about uh, uh, students. These uh, were uh, different uh, reactions that the student had um, they may be in class or uh, uh, at social uh, functions or at any other time. Uh, we, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, such things as the reaction of the student to criticism, uh, his um, uh, attendance uh, uh, programs, uh, was he ahead of time or behind time? Uh, 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 what was his um, reactions in study? Did he uh, uh, learn things rapidly and forget them rapidly? Um, there were so many, many things that we do. The uh, theory was that if these anecdotes were collected by a great number of faculty members and brought together for the same student, they would serve sort of as snapshots, which if put together, may uh, indicate some uh, personality uh, trait. Uh, we were very careful to emphasize that these should be very positive or good traits as well as negative traits. Uh, of course, the human tendency probably was to put in more of the negative ones than uh, positive ones, but this was a... Uh, uh, um, discounted uh, in uh, the uh, counseling work which followed. It was a function of the department head to call the student in uh, at periodic intervals and review his uh, anecdotal record system to uh, be careful to praise him for those that were positive to caution him uh, about uh, those that may seem to be negative. In this way, the student had a, a chance to see himself as his teachers had seen him. And uh, the reasons for the reactions of the teachers uh, uh, to his behavior uh, was actually jotted down in uh, his own uh, actions. Uh, I would uh, say that the uh, study uh, had a, a lot of good in it. 
uh, certainly you had to be more conscious, conscious of the behavior of your students. You were drawn a little uh, closer to him. The student uh, knew uh, uh, what uh, items uh, had uh, occasionally. Uh, he uh, uh, did quite well. A uh, progress chart uh, was drawn up to serve as a par score showing the time that uh, each unit in a course uh, was uh, uh, expected to be completed and a, a student uh, uh, progress uh, in respect to time was marked off on this chart. So students could look at the chart uh, in the classroom at any time and see uh, how uh, they were uh, making a progress in respect to time. The uh, uh, slower students uh, found uh, far more difficulty with the uh, program. They uh, uh, probably learned more thoroughly, but required uh, a much greater time uh, than students of better educational ability. Uh, at the end of the school year, uh, probably uh, five to ten percent of the students had finished all requirements and had also completed additional units not required but offered as an enrichment to the uh, course. Uh, students uh, who would uh, normally uh, 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 B, uh, C, and B students had probably met requirements, but with uh, uh, possibly greater understanding than they would have obtained uh, in a classroom uh, lecture uh, type of uh, in instruction uh, system. The slower students, however, uh, found a great difficulty uh, in time and uh, sometimes uh, 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 they would have accomplished only half a year's work in a year's uh, uh, time. Uh, what would that mean then uh, students are thinking this is a three-year program for the slower student then he would not really complete three years of work would he? That is quite true and uh, then the question uh, came as to whether he should be given uh, a uh, document, a uh, credential of some sort, and uh, we had considered, and I think actually did, uh, uh, give uh, two students who had uh, stayed in the program for the regular three years a letter uh, stating their accomplishments. Uh, those in the upper uh, area of the class, of course, received the uh, diploma credential. Of course there was some other problems. Uh, the uh, uh, aggressive uh, student uh, would tend to monopolize the uh, teacher's time. Uh, in uh, this way uh, he could uh, uh, probably progress at a uh, faster rate uh, if he could uh, call upon the teacher to uh, help him over each little difficult uh, 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 spot. Uh, the student who was somewhat uh, 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 timid uh, would uh, not ask for attention uh, from the teacher and would uh, often uh, idle away his time uh, 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 without making a uh, the progress that he should. Uh, it was necessary for uh, the uh, teacher who acted as a uh, advisor and consultant in the classroom to uh, recognize these uh, uh, students and uh, uh, go to them uh, uh, frequently uh, to check their progress uh, even though they were not uh, called upon uh, by the uh, student. Now, as I remember, the individualized education system, 
individualized instruction system uh, probably disappeared during the mid 40s and was gone completely by the time the GI Bulls of World War II came? Yes, uh, it uh, began to thin out um, actually in about 34, 35. Uh, an another difficulty that arose uh, occurred when you had a change in faculty. A new faculty member not used to the system or uh, uh, did not particularly like the uh, uh, instruction uh, units that had been uh, prepared by another teacher and uh, courses were constantly being uh, revised. Uh, a great deal of uh, faculty time uh, was spent in uh, writing and preparing uh, courses and uh, this uh, uh, time uh, uh, of course couldn't be offered to students. Uh, it was in uh, many respects uh, uh, quite uh, inefficient in this respect. Now another experimental uh, technique uh, was the activity analysis I believe that Dr. W.W. Charters at the Institute. Oh yes, uh, that started about uh, 1929. Uh, that uh, uh, was uh, 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 in progress for three or four years uh, before the uh, individualized system of instruction was uh, uh, began. Uh, Dr. Charters, uh, who was uh, highly recognized uh, in the uh, educational field was uh, employed uh, by the Institute as a consultant. Uh, one of his uh, basic ideas that we uh, experimented with was the so-called duty analysis uh, system of uh, preparing uh, the curriculum. This consisted essentially of establishing definite training objectives. Then, by calling on people in industry who held positions uh, in line with these objectives, and finding out actually the duties that these people performed. Then uh, the list of duties was cross-checked with the programs that might be offered in the uh, curriculum. Now this had uh, considerable merit uh, in uh, uh, programs where uh, a large percentage of your students were training uh, for uh, a uh, similar type of position. Uh, I believe uh, the retailing uh, department and its program was uh, one place where the duty analysis really uh, uh, functioned well. I think in the mechanical department, uh, uh, the students who were training uh, for some uh, position in uh, skilled machining and there was a fairly large number of these in the Rochester area. There you could uh, study uh, the work of a tool maker or instrument maker and uh, you found uh, many uh, uh, activities uh, that the student should be uh, taught in school. Uh, in other uh, spots where the uh, uh, number of positions uh, that your students entered after graduation varied widely in their uh, requirements. Uh, then the uh, number of uh, uh, objective jobs were so great that the uh, duty analysis really had uh, uh, little uh, value. And that uh, passed out of the picture or something. 
thirties? Oh, early? I would say that uh, passed out to picture you in the early thirties. It didn't last. Uh, didn't last too long. Um, and and again, it had uh, certain values, uh, even where uh, the uh, job analysis were numerous. Uh, you did uh, uh, come up with uh, certain things that you had been teaching and uh, were, uh, uh, it was hard to find any use of them uh, in uh, uh, the work that the student would do after graduation. It did uh, result in refining uh, courses. Well, now, Earl, these have been some extremely interesting uh, sidelights on the Institute's uh, history, which you played a very important part. What were some of the uh, outstanding satisfactions that you had over the years as you, as you worked at RIT? Well, I, I found uh, uh, two great satisfactions. Although I did not intend to stay in the field of teaching when I first started, I discovered that I liked very much uh, working with the students. Uh, I also had the privilege of uh, doing consulting engineering uh, work in my uh, spare time, when I could find spare time. Uh, and uh, this was uh, a complete uh, change of what I was doing uh, at the school um, and offered uh, in many ways uh, recreation as well as uh, uh, extra work and income. So. Uh, uh, my feeling that uh, to have two jobs going all of the time uh, uh, was uh, quite interesting and probably uh, uh, offered more satisfaction to me than uh, uh, just uh, uh, having uh, employment in one area only. What do you think has been the change in attitude of the Rochester and the Western New York community towards the Institute? period of time that you've been connected with it? Well, I think that this can be uh, expressed uh, from the um, uh, uh, financial viewpoint, although that is not my, was not my principal area. I was uh, uh, well aware of the uh, uh, financial problems that the Institute had. Uh, a fundraising program uh, shortly after uh, Colonel Randall came I think probably uh, after the uh, uh, community was well satisfied that the Institute was on its feet again and uh, really uh, rendering a service, uh, a, a very sizable uh, um, amount of uh, income was received by uh, a through a financial drive. Uh, whereas we still had to watch our pennies, uh, I can assure you that 26 on was not quite the same as 24 to 26. And as time went on, uh, more uh, gifts uh, were uh, made to the Institute, and uh, I uh, am not aware of any real serious financial problems we had uh, after they had once established its programs in about 1926-7. From the standpoint of the engineering community and the attitude of the chief engineers and in the industries around Rochester, uh, has there been a distinct change there in their concept of the Institute? I am not too well aware of the change uh, uh, because uh, even uh, when I uh, uh, first came to Rochester, uh, my feeling was that uh, the local uh, people in the engineering societies and in the various uh, uh, management, technical management positions thought uh, reasonably well of the uh, students. Uh, certainly uh, uh, from the time the co-op program uh, started, uh, we had excellent support uh, uh, from the uh, management association and from the industries and I am uh, quite uh, sure that uh, this was uh, felt throughout the community. Uh, many of the cooperative students uh, uh, worked for engineers as draftsmen and testmen in various positions and uh, I think that uh, 
their respect of the uh, engineering uh, personnel uh, was gained very rapidly. Uh, we were a little slow at uh, bringing the people from a distance in. Well, as you look back now, how would you rate the quality of the educational program compared with other uh, engineering uh, schools? We have the co-op program, most engineering schools are full-time. What would be your uh, off-the-cuff evaluation? Well, in the early days as a technical institute, we did not have much competition. Uh, probably the um, outstanding school offering a two-year uh, technical uh, program was Pratt Institute. And uh, they uh, uh, moved up uh, many years ahead of RIT to a full four-year program although their two-year program was highly regarded throughout the uh, country. Uh, then there was Wentworth Institute in uh, Boston that I think had reasonably good reputation. Milwaukee Polytechnic Institute uh, all, uh, was doing a good uh, three-year post-high school uh, uh, job. Uh, the others were uh, oh I think only two or three others existed and uh, they offered uh, highly specialized program and probably much closer to the uh, skilled uh, uh, vocational uh, type of training. Uh, certainly uh, uh, we looked upon uh, RIT as doing as good a job as Pratt and, I, and we felt very good uh, about that because we also regarded Pratt Institute as doing a excellent work and I think uh, uh, in many cases, uh, the engineers had felt that uh, I had, uh, for example, this remark came to just just many, many times. Why don't you give those boys a bachelor's degree? They're as good as most of the engineers I employed for all, from other students. Now that can be taken for what it is worth, but uh, I think it does express opinion that these uh, graduates went out and did a, a, a real uh, service in the technical areas. Now, then, as we went to the baccalaureate level in the mid-50s, uh, and our program uh, the first two years full-time and the last three years co-op, uh, we were sending young men out with the BS degree, and they would uh, obviously be competing with the engineering college graduates. Uh, do you have any reactions there as to the feedback of the personnel men, the chief engineers? Well, let me uh, first express uh, this uh, idea. There is, a, of course, a good reason why uh, uh, an institution like RIT uh, makes a change. And uh, the reason why we had moved from the Technical Institute to the full uh, engineering uh, program uh, was the fact that we had done such a good job at the Technical Institute level that the state of New York had moved in and established many uh, technical institutes throughout the state. The community college, uh, somewhat similar, uh, was coming on at a great rate and uh, this movement had also taken place throughout the entire uh, country. So we were in a position of having uh, done uh, a uh, service by uh, uh, experimenting in the field of technical education beyond the bachelor's level. And we had done that uh, in such a way that we had actually uh, 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 felt the competition to such an extent that it was uh, advisable, felt advisable to uh, move up in the uh, program. Now from the very first offering of the bachelor's degree, we argued very strongly, and I would say without very much opposition, uh, on the part of the faculty or on the part of the uh, directors for a first class job in the field of uh, engineering. 
And I think this was true in all other programs at the Institute. For example, we said uh, that the students should attend classes beyond high school an equal period of time as he would attend in the uh, usual uh, engineering college. He had a full four years of classroom attendance. Uh, cooperative employment, as valuable as it was, was never offered academic credit. This we consider to be above and beyond the plus. academic credits. Very good. Well, Earl, you've certainly been a gold mine of uh, information here, as I knew you would be. And it's been a real pleasure to talk with you. And I think that maybe we'll just close this now, and uh, I'll review it a little bit. I think we'll have these typed up. I'm not just sure who I'm going to prevail on to do the typing. But I think we will have them typed up, and then, uh, if so, uh, I may give you a copy to take a look at it. But uh, I would like to have this become a part of the Institute Archives. This is important. This is, we were a part of history in the making. I'm glad we get it down on tape. So, thanks much. <laughs>